Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 133 of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Perry. And with me this week, as he always is, it's Swan, the bourbon finder. How are you, Swan? I'm great, Perry. I'm ready Golly, to drink. Golly, when, when was the last time somebody called you the bourbon finder? Uh, it's been a while. Uh, <laughs> most of the people that like started catching up with the show, they called me that for a long time. And then now I'm just Swan. Yeah. So it's now, yeah. Now you're you're a part of the show, and you are you're just Swan. Yeah, I'm just Swan. That's not a bad thing. I'm fine <laughs> with that. Hey, Swan, we start every shot with flying blind, and you've got a sample of something that uh, I blinded I do, you with. I do. I've got a small little bit of it right here. Hey, me too. Ooh. Yeah. This is like vaguely familiar, but it is very like kind of caramely, but also like just straight Rick House. I'm getting some. I've never gotten on it, gotten this on it before, but it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup on the nose for me. I could definitely see that. It's light. It is light, but it's not. It's not so light that you're trying to pull stuff, like to try and find stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm still I I enjoy the nose. It yeah, is that, definitely nutty. I yeah, get that. and the the oakiness is really coming through too. The more I kind of spend some time with it, and I just associate nutty at all with with Jim Beam. So I'm I'm assuming it's somewhere in that wheelhouse. But I've had some recently that even Heaven Hill got a little nutty. That is true. Well, you basically hit the nail on the head. This is Jim Beam Distillers Cut. Um, oh, okay. I wanted I wanted to have us drink something kind of in the same vein as what we're going to be drinking later on. Yeah, I wanted to prep our palates uh, for this little shootout between two age stated Knob Creek small batch bottles and the one non age stated that was out for a while. Yeah, and you brought this up, gosh, like two weeks ago or something about how cool of an idea this would be. Yeah, no, I'm excited for it, man. I got I looked out and got a bottle of the the old stuff to try. You did, yeah. I got a a, a little airplane bottle of the non age stated. Man, I went in. They had none of those. I had to get a whole pint. So I went. <laughs> <laughs> so I got I got a pint with me. But uh, I, who's I would have done that? But who's mad about a little extra Knob Creek though? Not I said the dragonfly. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Oh, if you can't tell, I'm exhausted this week. So we're gonna we're gonna keep the energy high, and I'm not gonna think about the soft bed that's waiting for me on the other end of recording this episode. High energy, Swan. Let's do it. Woo! Get those waveforms kicking real big. Oh, they're they're up there. Oh, uh, speaking of kicking, um, what have you kicked into your glass to drink recently? Jeez. Man, that was a stretch. You good? <sighs> Just no, I um, what have you been drinking recently? Knob Creek Single Barrel, man. I had um, I just finished up a bottle of that yesterday. What else have I had? Oh, Rare Breed. I'm probably halfway through a, a thing of Rare Breed. So, you, you got a, a bottle of Knob Creek for your pseudo Father's Day, correct? Yes, from, from Papa Ritter. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, was it, was it a um, pick from somewhere? Yeah, it was a it was a liquor barn pick. Uh, it's called Ruby's Red Delight. Um, I've not I've not had that one yet, so I'm excited to to get into it. I've also been uh, drink. Oh, sorry, I apologize. Was there anything else you've been drinking? No, no, I just been going for the high proof stuff. <laughs> I can't say that I'm not doing the same. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I I did after coming back from. Uh, vacation test negative for the COVID-19 coronavirus. Hey, you're trying to prevent it. Nothing wrong with that. Dude, I, I've been the same way. If I have a bottle of 120 proof or more around, I am drinking that. I'm drinking it. That's the best excuse because... I've ever had is a global pandemic <laughs> to be a proof hound. Oof. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I, I have a... I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, I've also been enjoying uh, a couple of other picks from uh, Liquor Barn. I, I've talked about it, and I actually got you to try these last week, too. 
Um, yeah, this might have been another. I might have. I might be repeating myself. I can't remember anymore. Um, but the Russell's pick that I brought over for you to try, and oh, the yeah. Yellowstone pick uh, as well. Both of those are actually downstairs in my kitchen right now. But dadgum it, man! I did not realize that a four-year-old pick could be as good as this one from Yellowstone. I am. I am like all about it. And you you really seem to enjoy it too. Yeah, it was uh it was really Buffalo Trace reminiscent for me, but I, mm-hmm. I really liked it. What about if we this is just you can put it in, you can leave it in, I don't care. We love these people listen <laughs> to us. Uh but what if we did a head to head pick from Total Wine and Liquor Barn? We got like a Knob Creek from oh, one I love that. and uh then we got like a Russell's from one and then just blind head to head. I'm totally about that. Oh, okay. I am all about we'll that. Put, we'll put it's, them together there. You know what's funny, too, is like they're, at, at this point, you're actually getting into a, like more fairness territory because for a long time, Total Wine was only getting like nine-year picks mm-hmm. um, or maybe some 10-year picks, but they were going up against Liquor Barn with their 13, 14, 15-year-old picks. And now that... Jim Beam has backed off of that so they can save it for some of their reserve products. Liquor Barn's starting to get more nine-year-old picks or more 10-year-old picks. So we could actually have a pretty good head-to-head with those uh, if we if we played our cards right. Um, and, of course, I'm always down to drink Russell's single barrel. Yeah, see, well. you're hitting the nail on the head there. This sounds like a great idea just to kind of put these together, but also this is just an excuse for me to drink four barrel proofs in one episode. So, <laughs> I mean, I can't I can't say it's not a little bit selfish. Uh So that that might be uh something that we do before you come back over to record here. Now he's thinking. <laughs> I got you. I got yeah. you. Hey, speaking of recording, um, I am actually going to be gone again next week. Um, We got Ritter family vacation uh, coming up. So there is a chance that we might not have an episode next week. Um, Or maybe Swan and I can record something a little bit later in the week. um, Just so we have something out uh, on the main feed. Um, but I'll leave that up to you, Swan. And if, uh, people would like to, I, I don't want to take a week off. Um, I just want to, want to try to see if we can get something else out there, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I don't want to make you commit to anything either live on air. Oh no. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I, my schedule, I'm off on Friday. So, oh, Friday and Saturday. Actually Friday would be pretty, might be, might be okay. We'll figure it out. We don't have to do this on air. What are we doing? We got this. Let's talk about the news. Oh, yeah. We got news, man. We do have news. I forgot to include a couple of things in our, our document for news, though. Gotcha. Yeah. I, there are two more distilleries that are opening back up for tours and tastings on July 1st. And those are the two Sazerac-owned distilleries here in Kentucky, Barton 1792 and Buffalo Trace. Nice. Um they put out a little bit of information. They've shown uh, some, some images of what it's going to look like when you go and do a tasting there. Uh, there's a great over-the-shoulder shot of uh, Freddie Johnson doing a, a tasting at Buffalo Trace. If you've not seen it, you can actually uh, head over to It's Bourbon Night's Instagram page, uh, at It's Bourbon Night, and see that. It's it's kind of a cool little image. Um, I know everybody's excited to get back to... Uh, doing these these tours and tastings. I know places like Four Roses haven't actually started doing tastings yet, uh, but their gift shop is open and they are able to um, they are able to still go and you know check stuff out. I'm sure they can still do tours at the very least. Yeah, and I, I imagine they're still doing tours. Uh, I I would really <laughs> did you see the picture of Freddie with his mask on, his arms all spread? Oh, I love that picture. Just yeah, super yeah, yeah. excited to get back into it, man. You can't see facial expression at all, but you know that man is just beaming with the smile, you can man. Still, you can still tell that his cheeks are like real high from his big old smile mm-hmm. and just, just tickled to death that he gets to go back to doing what he loves. I actually, I think I might have talked about this with you off air mm-hmm. last week um but i i ran into freddie at kroger like three weeks ago two or three weeks oh yeah it was about three weeks ago at this point and i i i was like and i the funny thing was i had just been thinking him uh, thinking about him 
that day too. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to just go see happy old Freddie Johnson just you know, so it, so much enjoying everything that's going on in his world and, and getting to share the good news of Buffalo Trace. And I was just thinking how much I miss just being around that excitement, being around the the exuding of that energy. Yeah. And sure enough, I was turning the aisle to get cat food, and there he was also getting cat food. And <laughs> I was like, Freddie Johnson, what are you doing here? <laughs> It's and crazy, I mean, we just we just caught up for a minute and we we're like, how how's everything been? And he's like, well, we've just been, you know, we've been keeping on keeping on for as long as we can. So I'm excited to get back there. Yeah. Full full uniform, too, man. The man is all Buffalo. Oh, yeah, Trace. absolutely. I saw. And that's the thing, too. I saw him at uh, Kroger in full uniform. He still had his Buffalo Trace belt and uh, and button down shirt on. That's wild. So it was it was pretty great. It made. It made my heart happy for at least a little while. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of distilleries, uh, there is a new release uh, that is coming out from the Woodford Reserve Distillery. It is one of their brand new uh, little kind of experimental bottles. Uh, it's their standard bourbon uh, that has then been finished in four different casks uh, that once held. This is coming out, by the way, from GoBourbon.com. Uh, that once held Oloroso Sherry, Amontillado Sherry, Ruby Port, and Tawny Port before being blended and bottled uh, at the distiller's standard 90.4 proof. Excuse me. Uh, that's going to be released uh, this coming weekend. It's going to be uh, 50 bucks a bottle. And it's also going to be in a, in a 375, so it's, you know, kind of that same standard size that they do with, like, the Double Double Oaked. And that kind of thing. So I I am interested to find out what the heck this even tastes like. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll say that they've come out with experimental stuff in the past in these bottles. And I it's been, I'm not going to say lackluster. It's just not been on the top of my list to pick them up. It's been hit or miss for me. Yeah. So the Double Double Oaked, you know, it was decent, obviously, because they put it out, I think, two or three times already. But some of the other ones I just didn't even worry about getting. This one, however... I might I might bite the bullet on this one because it it seems like it's pretty close to that uh, dovetail stuff you know just that like ultra mm. mixed like lots yeah. of flavor going on and I liked the dovetail stuff pretty well uh, I know a lot of people didn't but I'm I'm interested to see if it's in that same caliber yeah I I don't always it, this isn't a product that I I look at and get excited for necessarily mm-hmm. not something that jumps off the page and makes me go, oh, I've got to get this. But at the same time, this definitely has piqued my interest, uh, especially in terms of new releases. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad it's coming out in this size as opposed to their uh, Master's Collection Mm -hmm. because those usually hit like anywhere between 100 to 150, depending on what you're getting. Yeah. So that's yeah. um, I'm excited. I think I will pick this one up if I see it uh, at one of the you know shops I usually frequent. Sure. I don't know if it's going to be released outside of the the actual distillery, but I mean there's there's a chance we've seen some of them get out there. Yeah, as well. the double double oaked and a lot of the spring releases have kind of hit uh-huh. shelves. The fall releases, it's hit or miss on whether or not they'll actually they'll hit the shelf. So I sure. don't know. Sure. Cool. So that's a that's something to look forward to, uh, especially if you're in the Central Kentucky area this week. Uh, you can also pick it up at the distillery between noon and 4 p.m. this coming Friday. Some other releases uh, that we have to talk about coming from the Whiskey Advocate page. Uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye is out and about. You can hear our review of it from last week's episode. I know that, Swan, you weren't uh, the biggest fan of it, but I still enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I think I'm going to be a bigger fan when winter rolls around and I'm just on that rye kick. True. So. True. Yeah, that's a, that's a good possibility. $60 a bottle, of course, uh, is going to be a widely available release. Uh, and as we have said before, it includes whiskeys aged four, six, and eight years old uh, and is 112.2 proof. So that's kind of exciting. Um I, I, like I said, we reviewed it last week, um, so if you want to hear our thoughts on that, 
Uh, Swan actually went into that review blind, so you're getting something fairly honest from at least one of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I always give honest reviews. If I don't like it, I don't like it. If I like it, I'm going to tell you. I don't know why I went New York there for a second, but that's okay. Anyway, jeez, uh, this is a loose episode. There is a, a new release coming from MGP with their Remus label. Uh, it's the Remus Repeal Reserve, uh, Series 4, 12 years old, 100 proof, $85. Uh, going to be released uh, this coming September. Uh, it's going to be a limited edition. Um we have had a little bit of experience with the the Remus products from uh, the Bourbon on the Banks last year. Oh, a little bit of experience, exactly, because they, <laughs> I, they, okay, so every booth brought a little bit for us to try, and I was super excited to try all of it. Remus was like, oh, samples, you want a few of those? And they brought us, I kid you not, three of every single product at their booth, and they came yes, they probably did. as the most stacked distillery at that event there was a I, I i apologize i cannot remember the the lady's name that we got to chat with um but that was a really wonderful conversation um that we had with her about the remus products and just about mgp in general yeah she seemed really set on just presenting them as a viable bourbon because a lot of mm -hmm. people just hear mgp and they immediately dismiss it and to be honest with you they didn't really put their foot into the water very strongly because they put out that eight and sand bourbon which was just not mm -hmm. not super good uh in my opinion but the remus stuff that they gave us was pretty good and the rossville union uh stuff was pretty strong as well and i liked that and they gave us a uh, vodka as well i believe and i did i don't remember trying that one uh, i don't really either <laughs> <laughs> yeah no when somebody hands you a good uh, amount of samples you just they kind of blur after a while but i, they do. I remember they enjoying very it much do and that was like the last thing that we we recorded uh that day was it i, I think yeah i think so i think we had that in the <laughs> i think it was that yeah, that was a long day yeah and then we had the maysville uh right before we left Oh, that's right. We did. Yeah. Oh, man. That was... Yeah. Um, we're not going to talk too much about that on air. Yeah. <laughs> Look, after a few Blackberry smashes from my, from Yellowstone, from Limestone Branch, I start feeling pretty okay. <laughs> yeah, you just loosen up a little, if you know. I mean, it's just... just yeah, just a... Just, just a, a hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so at 85 dollars, is this a release that you think uh you would be looking to to pick up it is uh 12 years old by the way uh i'm gonna be honest probably not but i i i think uh as far as them showing off what the the brand is capable of i definitely will try this at a bar because i've seen this remus come out before i didn't get to try the volstead that i wanted i didn't even see a bottle of the volstead to be honest oh with yeah you. i didn't either uh, but I mean, I, I definitely am interested in trying, like, just if I could get a lineup of some of the Remus products again, I'm, I'm there. It's only appropriate for me to be wearing my buy bar pass podcast shirt. Yeah. While we're talking <laughs> this, about that. This is a bar. This is a bar for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, uh, in that regard, the rare breed rye is definitely a buy for me, but yes, yes, that's a neither here nor there at this point. This is a weird release coming out of Ohio. Buster Douglas 42 to 1 bourbon. Uh, it's going to be finished, non age stated, 84 proof, and $42 a bottle. Going to be, well, apparently it's already been released. Uh, it says in April 2020, and it's only available in Ohio. And it was made for. Uh, What's this say here? Made for boxing. And again, this is coming from Whiskey Advocate. Made for boxing-focused brand ring, ringside whiskey by Cleveland Whiskey. This bourbon is finished using the company's proprietary process with toasted American oak. It's named for boxer James Buster Douglas's family, uh, famous heavyweight championship win against Mike Tyson in 1980 when his odds of beating Tyson were 42 to 1. Okay. Well, so it's another celebrity whiskey to a degree. Yeah. Um, I mean... I'm glad that they themed it. I, I don't know. 
I know nothing about this one, man. I mean, I the, the ABV is 42%. The price is $42. I mean, they... They really went all in. They're hitting a niche, man. I don't know if it's okay. for me. Uh, mm-hmm. But did you see that it's also finished in maple syrup barrels? That's wild. And named for Ray Boom Boom Mancini and Jack Dempsey Whiskey. Huh. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if I get the chance to try it, I might. Because I know that we got to try, thanks to Ian, one of our listeners, uh, the um, Tom Foolery finished mm-hmm. in, in that. And I wasn't... Uh, I was kind of surprised. I, I liked I it too, yeah. quite a bit. So I'd like to try more of these because I've seen a lot of like syrup finished in bourbon casks, but not a ton the other way around. So I want to kind of see how this one stacks up. Yeah, for sure. And uh, really the last release we have to talk about is the Skunk Brothers Smoke Jumper Bourbon, which comes out of Washington, same place that uh, Woodenville comes from. But this is much different, whereas Woodenville is five years old. Swan, do you see the age on this one? I see the description where it's rapid <laughs> aged using distillery's proprietary accelerated aging process. That's a fun way to say five gallon barrel. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not just that. It's aged for 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, 90 proof, going to be $40 a bottle. It's supposed to be released out in Washington and Oregon uh, this month. Um, what the heck, man? You know, when <laughs> someone's describing Kentucky distilleries and they're like, well, really, just to call it bourbon, it just has to touch the barrel and come out the other end. They they yeah. did it. They, they they literally did it. This is the example of that. Uh, um, so, uh, good for them. Whiskey, whiskey Advocate says, among the different reactions taking place, heat from intracellular fli- uh, friction rather sparks the creation of esters pleasant usually fruity flavors so there's some extra work that's going into actually creating the flavor profile of this uh, uh yeah it's called moonshine making i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry it may be amazing it may be some sort of revolutionary it, thing it, it could be wildly incredible at forty dollars, though, it's a hard pass for me. That's some expensive moonshine, man. <laughs> man, we are light on news and we're light on TTB labels this week. Yeah, but uh, I'm excited about this first TTB label. I really am too. And we we talked about uh, pulling a a sister product of this out to actually review on this week's episode, but I, we're, we're going to wait just a little bit uh, to actually get into that. But this is the single barrel version of Jack Daniels barrel proof rye whiskey. Yeah. I, well, I like, I like the proof, man. I, proof. I'm not upset about it. 132.5. Yeah. I mean, it's going to hurt because it's Jack Daniels. And it's, to me, they have always had kind of a stark burn, but I mean, a lot of their single barrel products have really surprised me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this one. Yeah. I, I'm excited to as well. It, I, I, I believe I saw somebody say that it doesn't look like it's going to be a pick, uh, scenario and that it's just going to be a special bottling. Um, so I, I, I'm excited for it for sure. Um, don't really have much experience, of course, uh, with the Jack Daniels rye, but at, in opposition to, say, the George Dickel rye, which is distilled at MGP, this is actually distilled at Jack Daniels in Lynchburg. So, all right, okay. So there you go. It's their own distillate, and I'm I really am looking forward to it. It's going to be an interesting, uh, an interesting release. I'm I'm sure. Speaking of interesting releases. <laughs> Swan, did you ever just look at a bottle of bourbon and go, you know what? I bet that there's something in this for for the jockey, for the horse runner in your life. No. Didn't no, think I don't you think had. I, no. But apparently the folks uh, at the Owensboro Distilling Company in Owensboro, Kentucky, did feel that. And they have a, a label that has made it through the TTB called Jockey's Pride, which is a small batch straight bourbon. It's 100 proof. Uh, The mash bill is actually right on the bottle. 70% corn, 21% winter rye, and 9% malted barley. And on the back, it says aged a minimum of two years. Yes, yes. Uh, There's, okay, so I'm going to go with the good stuff first. 
love the ink style artwork. I think it's Oh, cool. the background is beautiful. Yeah, no, I really enjoy that. Just gets a little abstract. It's got a lot of cool stuff in there. I really do like the labeling. A little lackluster in the color department, but it's not bad. Negative stuff. There's a lot of this. Aged a minimum of two years in New York, New Oak. Great. Uh, not not too redeeming. And then you look into it a little further, and we've got this up at the top. Uh, this is a product from the OZ Tyler Distil- Distillery. Terra oh, Pure. I missed that. Terra Pure, Kentucky Distillers. Ah, yeah. oh, that just ruined it for me, man. I just, I well. can't, I, I've never been able to get behind any of that stuff. Also, it's not exactly a redeeming thing that the TTB filing is batch number 22. What happened to the other 21 batches? <laughs> Are they good? Are they stockpiling them? <laughs> Did they taste it? And they're like, no, don't Uh-oh. put it out. Uh-oh. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I we'll, we'll have to look into that a little bit more. Um, I don't want to totally disregard this, though, considering we did a few weeks ago have an incredible two-year-old bourbon uh, out of Hotel Tango. So that's true. I, I'm not. That's I'm true. not going to discount this uh, before we've even tried it. So I just am not a big fan of anything that this Terra Pure process has created. So maybe yep. this will be the turning point. I don't know. We got one last TTB label. Uh, we do? It's another single cast nation. I Yeah, and it's, a, it's another Whistle Pig release from them as well. Which I'm not mad about. I, yeah, me neither. I've not had any of these, but I've heard that the Whistle Pig ones are very sought after. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, Along with all of them, because they're very low bottles. This one's 450 bottles. Yes. Uh, It says it's a rye finished in rum and vermouth casks, uh, aged 12 years, and it is 113.4 proof. Ooh, man. Uh, It looks like it's going to be heavy on the sweet and earthy side, based on the tasting notes on the back of the single cask nation uh, Mm -hmm. label. So here for and nutty nutty and floral and nutty. are also up there nutty indeed i uh, single cask nation is just one of those where it's like it's basically a home run regardless everybody just kind of unanimously is like yeah they're fantastic <laughs> yeah they seem like they're worth it when they actually do do get put in front of you but it's not often that happens yeah i've said it before there's only been one that i've ever had and it was a, a wild turkey pick or I guess a, a Russell's pick um, at the Rare Bird 101 meetup last year. So, mm-hmm. and that was amazing. That was yeah. easily one of the best bottles of bourbon I've ever had. So, you can be on the lookout for that. You can uh, head over to singlecasknation.com if you are interested in uh, purchasing that bottle once it becomes available. I imagine it's going to be about a month or two before anything becomes of that. Uh, maybe even more. Who's to say? I don't know how these things work. Do you? No, I've not seen any of them in person. I've not even seen them at a bar. I mean, it's just, <laughs> they're a myth. I know well, they you, exist, but I've you never... Can, you can only buy them through their website. So if you're signed up like to their emails, they'll email when there's a new one available, and then you can like pre-order it or whatever. And then you get to own one. Uh, but otherwise... You don't, you wouldn't know that it even existed if, you know. I need to get one of those emails. <laughs> You've got an email address, Swan. We set it up for you for the show, didn't we? Didn't we do yeah, that? One yeah, one of those electronic right. mail addresses. I need one of those. You're very Ron Swanson when it comes to technology at times. Uh, you were not kidding. <laughs> it is bad. It Delete is bad. all pictures of Ron. When it's like comes to my job, I'm like the tech savvy guy, and then I get home and I'm like, my headset jack's not working. What do I do about that? I don't know. Does let's try. Know and, how to use a calculator? Yeah, let's try a different computer and hope that that works. And it's like, Sean, why do you have three computers laying around? It's like, well, this one died, so I kept it, and this one died, so I kept it. So now I got this one that kind of works. I wish that was an exaggeration. I really do. It's a real gamble, man. It is. It, yeah. it is. Perry, you know what I'm excited about? I'm excited I think about the same thing you're excited about. We are done with the news, and we're getting into the tasting segment. Yes. As I said earlier, this was a, a tasting that you suggested. 
uh, both to me and Chad of its birthday. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm I'm curious about what this is going to turn into. So the, originally there was a nine year age statement, of course, on the Knob Creek small batch. Uh, it got taken away. And then really about a month ago, it came back. Yeah, they they teased this in Whiskey Advocate with like they did. nothing other than a picture. They just had the nine year age statement and like a giant Knob Creek ad. And nobody really said much about it. It was just in their their magazine that they put out. And uh, I was like, <laughs> Perry, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Do you see this right here? And uh, we've so just no, been waiting no for it to come out ever since. <laughs> yeah. So I just so. did a quick nose of all three of these. Uh-huh. They're pretty similar. <laughs> oh, mine are wildly different. Really? Okay, no. My first one's wildly different. The old one. Uh, the other two that are like borderline interchangeable. Okay, so the the old age stated for me is a little bit lighter than the non-age stated one at the moment. Mm-hmm. But there's a... There's an herbal note in the new age stated one that I'm not getting in either of the older two. This could get confusing <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> yes. All right. So just to, just to clarify, uh, we've, we've all, we've got three different bottles. We've got the old nine age stated or the old, old nine year age stated, the non age stated and the new nine year. Perry and I have the same non age stated in the new nine year, but we have separate old ones yes but they're not terribly what's the year on on yours i believe no oh, oh mine's from 2013 okay <laughs> so mine's from 2008 uh yeah so it's i don't know mine tastes like uh peanut brittle and butterscotch like just i mean it noses like that so i'm i'm excited to try this one the butterscotch is definitely coming through there's a tobacco note that I cannot ignore. It is like yeah. tobacco leaf. Yeah, it definitely well. is. And if you if you're not accustomed to cigars, I could imagine you having a slightly adverse reaction. It's a little that. off-putting, to it be is. honest. It is. Uh, it's it's just the, kind of out of out of left field, it seems like. Yeah, so this went from like butterscotch, sweet, nutty to just straight. You are in a tobacco warehouse. Uh, the finish is virtually non-existent. It's it's very light. I wouldn't say it's non-existent. I just think that it doesn't it doesn't have much going for it. I mean, there's there's no. a floral note to it, kind of hibiscusy. Um, and I, I'm I'm really getting like a peanut butter note somewhere in there too, uh, on on the finish. But there's no hug, really. But I will I will say I don't dislike this by any means. No, I, it is it's fine. I think if you're a cigar smoker, this is like up your alley. Yeah, this is phenomenal. Have you ever told? I don't think I've ever told this story on the podcast before. Do you know about like my my secret history with Knob Creek? No, I say secret history. It's not really secret. But so I was in a band. Um, gosh, three years ago, three or four years ago. Um, and the the bass player and I, his name was Billy, got to be really, really good friends. And on one of the trips that we took down to Nashville to play a bunch of gigs, I brought along a, a, just a 375 of Knob Creek. Mm -hmm. And somehow, I guess it was in the, the time when it was kind of getting phased out of having the age statement on it, and it was, it was nine years old. Um, and it was before I like ever started the podcast. It was before the podcast had even really been an idea. And 
<clears throat> excuse me, that was like the first time that we really kind of like bonded over like just sitting down. And, and it was kind of what went into my theory about like, you know, how important bourbon is and how it can be important to conversations uh, and to relationships and friendships and everything. Anyway, so that was uh, the bourbon that we first bonded over. It was the first time we really became good friends. And uh, unfortunately, to like a year and a half ago, really, at this point, um, he had a massive heart attack and passed away. And so every every time that I drink Knob Creek Small Batch, I think about Billy. And it's regardless of whether it's the the age stated or the non age stated, and even really the the single barrel. I mean, it it holds a very special place uh, for me. And uh, like, even if it's not necessarily an up to par pick, I still enjoy it for that reason. Like, I still always feel like I'm, you know, I'm I'm sharing something special with somebody who was special to me. So I I, I know I'm kind of... (laughs) I'm, I'm getting us off track a little bit with our tasty notes and everything, but I wanted to provide that context uh, in terms of uh, why Knob Creek, again, is special to me. So it, 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 no. it, it again goes back to how bourbon holds, different bottles hold special memories for us as well. No, I think you hit the nail on the head, man. I mean, there's there's going to be bottles that... Like, whatever you have at the hospital when the kid finally gets here, man, that bottle, anytime you see it, you're going to pick it up Mm -hmm. if it's hard to get. Because, I mean, that's just going to hold a special place to you. There's no no reason why you shouldn't, you know, revisit it from time to time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, this this particular um, Knob Creek bottle, I got... I actually found it in a store... I, if, if I remember correctly, I found it right after he passed away. And so I really only break it out once a year, twice a year, maybe, uh, in mm-hmm. commemoration of him. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's special to have around. Anyway, I have, I'm very sorry for sidetracking us. I wanted to give a little bit of my my whiskey memories with Knob Creek. So Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, I am definitely going to have to get you some of this because I would definitely want to try that. I'll get you some of mine too, for that matter. Yeah, I, I, it's strange. The nose and the the palate don't line up very well. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I I'm going to have to revisit this one once it kind of opens up a little bit. I don't think a neck pour is going to do this one justice, to be honest. Yeah, with and you. I I think that you're. It's funny because I'm experiencing some of what you're picking up, but I feel like I'm getting a less harsher experience with mine. It seems like it's mellowed out quite a bit. True. True. So, like the um, the one bourbon I love so much from from your collection is the uh, Fighting Cock Age State, the older one. Yeah. The pre fire one. I'm so good. <laughs> Um, Where is that bottle? <laughs> this nose, this nose is very similar to that. So it's got dustier notes to it. Yes, interesting. Uh, it's very like potent, you know, in your nose. It's there. That being said, the palate is just left field, completely different. I mean, it 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 goes from just like special. This is a pour I'm gonna take out every once in a while, kind of like what you were saying. You know, it's gonna it holds a special place. It could be connected to something to just like. Whew. Like it is just is wildly different. You're gonna have to definitely give it a try. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to trying that for sure. That being said, I just moved on to the non-age stated. It is a strong contender, man. It is a strong. I love contender. I love the nose on this. I, I really love the nose on this one. Yeah, and I, I took a sip of it as well. And I'm gonna be honest. As far if you're looking for cohesiveness from nose to palate to finish. This does it way better than the old one. That's tasty. Mm-hmm. Oh, dang it. You know what this reminds me of? 
I just I just tried this the other day. Oh man, Cro- that's so good. I'm sorry. No, it's this, it's amazing. This is the finish that I was missing on the first one. Because mm-hmm. it keeps rolling into into different flavors throughout the finish. I apologize, yeah. I interrupted you. No, you're good. I mean, it does roll into that kind of tobacconess, but it's not just so in your face. Mm-hmm. Um, they put in some new stuff at the store that I work at, and it's dark chocolate covered honeycomb. Huh. If that's if that's ever a tasting note, this is it. This has got some peanut butter Actually, in it, but yeah, it's definitely. I can... I can get on board with that. It is, but the honeycomb part of it is kind of more like honeycomb cereal. Yes, yeah, like yes. it's it's got a little bit more artificial sugar flavor to it, but it is it's, it's sweet as heck. <laughs> it is, it is, and it's a worth pointing out too that, and I'm so sorry, Chad. He made an updated video of his best uh, best bourbons under what thirty dollars uh-huh. or something like that, yeah. and immediately they're like eh, we'll just slap the age statement back on it like they, yeah exactly <laughs> they moved away from it yeah. so fast gotta update it again sorry man uh but it's <laughs> i could see i could definitely see why he he gravitated towards this because this is just i mean it's got some notes of like the underlying booker's notes where it's got that kind of honey drip finish it's got the the nuttiness you want from a from a jim peen product it's got that kind of peanut butteriness and it's it's sweet too, which is never never bad because then I can enjoy it whether it's cold outside because it's still going to warm me up, or if it's in the middle of the summer and I'm like, you know what, I'll kill some cereal even though it's nine p.m. <laughs> That's fine. You know what's great about this too? Even even coming off of an age stated version of this, that then you know the age, the age statement got it got taken off. This definitely holds up. As a budget bourbon, and and you know, does. you're paying about thirty dollars for a bottle, and that's not necessary. I think that's kind of the top, uh, like the ceiling in terms of budget. But it's definitely, it's definitely within that range. Nine years old, hundred proof. I mean, you you know, the days of Henry McKenna being. <laughs> A ten-year-old product at the same proof and widely available have long gone. So hopefully we're not going to see this happen anytime soon. If we do, we're just going to wind up with a non-age state of Jim or Knob Creek again. Um, but I, I think going back to back with these two is what I'm what I'm trying to say um, is that taking the age statement off did not deter from the quality of the product. No, if anything, it made it uh, more accessible to more people. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. I mean, Elijah Craig, we've gone over that. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. It goes from that dark, kind of smoky, really rickhouse heavy, almost too much oak yeah. to it becomes accessible. And I, I think that's great. It's a win-win for the distillery because it becomes accessible to more people, but it also becomes more accessible to make, hopefully, sure. which is fine with me. Yeah. I, I'm all for that, but it is, there's been that, that thing that everyone has in their head where it's like, oh, they took the age statement off. It's not going to be as good. Throw that out, man. Throw it out. I, it is, they know what they're doing, honestly, man. Honestly, my first experience with Elijah Craig was non-age stated. And, and I, I yep. said forever, and I still say it, Elijah Craig is what, if I had to tell somebody what bourbon tastes like, that's it. Yeah. It it is quintessential bourbon for me. And even even in the non-age stated realm. That's I mean that that's still where I land. Yes, I do love the age stated Elijah Craig's, but I'm not upset by the non-age stated version of it. So, that being said though, let's transition to see what happened when a distillery brought the age statement back on this product. Ooh, it's sweeter. It's a lot sweeter. Yeah. That's different than I thought it would be. I would have had a hard time saying that this was the same product based on the nose. Honestly. Yeah, I would have as well. I'm going to be honest. Some parts of it I like. Other parts are a little 
deterring to me. I got like a weird little like just small note of like paint thinner. I think I I know what you're saying. I read it as citrus though. Okay, I, I, maybe that's. I it. read it as like like lemon juice. See, I'm still getting more like it's citrusy. I'll give you that, but it's like Lysol citrus where it's. <laughs> I okay, know. I mean, I I can I can get on board with that. It, it might be like an artificial citrusiness mm-hmm. to it. So I, I'm I'm not going to fight you on that one by any means. Okay, palette's completely gone. There's no there's no citrus hardly at all on the palette. Whoa, 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 whoa! What I is that? like this. What is that? I know exactly what that flavor is. Oh my gosh, there's a it's a it's a Christmas it's some it's some Christmas like candy or treat. I know exactly what that is and I cannot put my finger on it. Oh my gosh. I know what it is. I know what, what it is. is. It? Did you have you ever had rolled potato candy? Mm, Do you know what that no. is? No. I don't know okay. what the heck that is. I'm going to have to send you- <laughs> Have you ever, okay, so I, I, that's what it's been called my entire life. There's probably multiple names. Uh, let me see if I can put, I can send you a link because I've kind of got a weird split setup yeah, you're going good. for everybody you're listening. But uh, let's see. As soon as you see it, you're going to be like, that's it. That's, that's it. Oh, it's an Irish thing. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense considering my family. Uh, all right. Let me copy this. I'm going to put it in the Google Drive. There you go. You've had these before. I know you have, but you probably just didn't think it was called potato candy because it represents nothing like potatoes. It it is like, it is that so much. It is good, though. It is really good. Oh, I know exactly what those are. Yes. Is that not it? That's 100% what that is. Because it's got the, the sweet peanut buttery creaminess of it. Mm-hmm. But it's also got a little bit of that savoriness to it as well. The finish That's is the not... weirdest part of this for me. I I would have to agree. It gets very honeyed. There's not a ton of that like Rick House stuff going on that we have from the original age statement. And I don't know. The tobacco is kind of taking a back seat on this one. Well, it's it's Which... not just that. It kind of leaves like a weird tongue coating two on the finish i'm not exactly sure what it is but it just kind of it's it's a it's a very odd aftertaste it is i this is like nostalgic for me and i appreciate that but i'm gonna be honest if i have to pick between these two i'm about to go buy the handle of the non-age data down the street i'm not gonna disagree with you on that by any yeah Because today I was placed with a tough decision. The guy told me at the store, who, by the way, when I said I wanted Knob Creek non-age stated, he looked at me and said, what about the 15 year? And I was like, you're going the wrong wrong direction there, sir. That's quite the upsell. <laughs> uh, but they only had pints and a handle. Uh, and I, I think I should have gone with the handle, if I'm being honest. The good thing, Swan, there's still time. There's still time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I... This was really interesting. I did not expect these products to be so different, Mm -hmm. but then still be so close in production value, I guess. I mean, you you assume with the non-age stated that what they did was take you know, like a seven and eight or nine year old blend and try to blend it with something a little bit older, maybe that they might've had just to kind of balance out some of those flavors. And it kind of seems like by, by being more meticulous with their blending, it helped them a little bit. They were trying, they were working a little bit harder to achieve the perceived flavor profile instead of just, you know, saying, okay, well, we've got this nine-year-old barrel. We got to, you know, get it 
quote unquote to taste. But even then, it's still kind of subjective. It just feels like more work actually went into the non-age stated one. I can, yeah, I can get behind that. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, this is really making me rethink, you know, just clamoring for products. Because, I, I mean, I used to be one of those people as well that was like, well, I used to be nine years old, and now it's non-age stated. Like, they really just... I don't think they're listening to their to their customer mm-hmm. base. No, they knew what they were doing. I need to just sit back and realize they're master distillers, and that master means something in front of it. It's not it's not just a, a random title for them to go in and just dump things together. I mean, it's they they know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, if I had to pick an order, I would put. Uh, I think I would put the non-age stated Knob Creek first followed up by the original nine yes. year with last place being the <clears throat> the current nine year release <clears throat> I 100% agree with you um, I don't know yeah. if I've shared this with you before I think I might have but I have a I have another birthday bottle that I'm excited to get into in August Oh yeah. yeah. It's my little 50 mil Knob Creek H stated from 93. It's the first year they ever bottled Knob Creek. Wow. I'm really nice. excited to to get into it. Um I I'll, 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 I'll save you half of this. Yeah, I mean, well, let's let's bring it on the podcast and sure, put it up against some more Knob Creek. Why, why, the heck why not? Man? Yeah. And I mean, it's so old that, them, and we we're an audio medium, so I'll explain it to you. It's not even in the Knob it's Creek not. bottle. It's in like a like a long neck fifty mil bottle. Yeah, it looks like a old. Uh, it looks like an old wild turkey bottle with the Knob Creek label it, strapped. It to kind it. of looks like if they bottled like fifty mil versions of Booker's or Baker's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's different, man. It's still same. Yeah, labeling. it's still wax dip too. But yeah. I imagine that the wax is going to be much easier to get off than the the bottles today. But also, look at that fill level. I mean, it's a hundred percent there. Like, there's there's yeah. no, I, 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 whatever that word is, evaporation. Evaporation. Thank you. There I almost you said go. dehydration, and I was like, that's not right. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, man. I really, I really I am. am shocked am with too. the way Knob Creeks come out with their products. But I mean, they are listening to their consumers because, like I pointed out, I've clamored for years to get the original nine-year age statement back, and maybe I need to take that back. And that's that's fine. Yeah, I, I think that it on, on, and we've been saying it forever. Age statements are not everything. It's not. it's about the quality of the product and. If you've got the right blend, then it's the right product. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, I don't. I definitely don't dislike the new not. Or the excuse me, the new age stated. No, no, we are splitting hairs here for sure. Like oh, they are yeah. all, they are all good. I'm not going to be upset if I go somewhere and they're like, "Do you have knob?" Or they like, "We've only got uh, Knob Creek Nine and like Benchmark." And I'm going to be like, "Okay, how many bottles of the Knob Creek Nine can you pour me tonight?" Like, I mean, it's going to be. <laughs> we're definitely splitting hairs. And I also definitely just try to tried to blend all three of these together too. Oh, okay, well, I'll join you. Because so, why the heck not, right? I mean. Yeah. It's small batching, small batches. And let me tell you, it smells delicious. I mean, this is the small batch series. We're just adding to it. (laughs) It's the, this is my bourbon podcast edition of the Jim Beam small batch series. Ooh, no, mine got weird. Oh, Mm -hmm. it got weird. Mine got weird. Oh, I wonder what part of that made it weird. That like acetone thing that I was picking up on oh, earlier, okay. it is just in the forefront now. It smells much more of like a dusty Jim Beam on my part. Ooh, the palette's good though. The palette got the finish I wanted, but it got even sweeter than any of the three that I had individually. 
I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at it either, but I think I still prefer the non-age stated Mm -hmm. out of the three. But this, yeah, you're right, though. This definitely delivers on the finish. Yeah. No, the finish, it it, it did well. Mm. Dang, For 100 proof, you got me. You got me, Knob Creek. It kicks. Or slaps, as the kids say. It slaps. Are you just working that into every podcast? I'm I'm trying to. I'm trying to make it sound not weird. So that I, I can feel just... like I feel like you're one of those people that's like, that's my catchphrase now. Like you're just <laughs> <laughs> you're putting it out in the world that like, I can say this. I say that. Can that's I not, something I do. Can I not say it? No, you definitely can. Go it ahead. Sounds slap like I, whatever you it want. Sounds like I can't say it. I feel like you can you can slap whoever you want, Barry. It's all good. Mm, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this was a pretty fun little shootout that we did. Yeah, no, I would love to do uh, more of these. If there's like a progression that we could we could do with some of uh, today's bourbon products, I'm here for it. Absolutely. And let me let me say this too. We've been saying this for many many episodes now, uh, but it has literally been 132 episodes since we've done a blind flight on the podcast. So since the very first episode, uh, we have not done a blind flight. So and I I mean, like, you know, like a flight fight kind of deal, like it's bourbon night style. So we might have to think about trying to do something like that soon. I think we could do that. I think we can make that happen. Yeah. Maybe once we uh, we're able to record in the same space again. Yeah, I might have to go and grab us like three uh, maybe four samples and bottle them up now for everybody and then just give it time to forget because I know that I will. <laughs> Are you going to... You're going to have to write it down, though. Oh, somewhere, yeah, but I, I don't have to read. I can't read. I'm a swan. <laughs> what about a double blind? Ooh, okay. Have somebody else set it for us? Yeah. I'd be down. We've got some some listeners offering to send us some some double blinds as well. Oh, we can make that happen for sure. So we'll we'll get into that. But before we get into that, we have to get into tips and bits. Oh yes, I got a good one that I just <laughs> started today. <laughs> we recommend things uh, for people. I got to be honest with you, Swan. I've been a little bit boring this week, and I, I'm going to have to scramble just a hair to find a, a tip or bit. Uh, so I'm gonna let you you go first. <laughs> gotcha. I'll take my time. Uh, Thank you. Did you did you watch Scrubs? Oh, of course I did. Big Scrubs fan. Yes. Do you know that they have a podcast? I did know that. Real doctor or fake doctors, real friends. Yes. Yes. This one is a uh, depending on whether or not he's watched it. Ian, this is a podcast for you. They are very very. Uh, heavy as far as interviewing people about movies and things that have come out recently and uh, really trying to get Hollywood to do uh, interviews on their podcast, uh, at least as of recently. And they, they're they they're just great. I mean, their dynamic is wonderful. It's been wonderful on Scrubs. It's been wonderful off camera. I mean, it's, it's just, it's good. Uh, Zach Braff and Donald Faison, great. Uh, I mean, it, it's just a, a wonderful combo. If you if you're into that kind of like movie space and learning more about it, or even just want some like behind the scenes stuff on Scrubs, uh, fantastic. And the Office is doing one too, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. Pam and Angela, yeah, they play, are. Yeah, they're doing one as well from mm-hmm. the Office. So there, there's some good content out there as far as podcasts, and they post so frequently. Have they do. Their, it's like twice a week at least. Three times a week. They do it Three every times. two days. Yeah, no, like their last posts, they've got one from four days ago, six days ago, and eight days ago. Look, I mean, there's a difference between trying to talk about news and also, you know, drinking fairly copious amounts of bourbon in order to produce content. If we were just doing a rewatch of a TV show, that would be different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's also just, it's insane because... I don't think I could coordinate an hour long episode with you every, you know, two to three days. <laughs> I have a hard time doing it once a week, man. I don't know how they do it. That being said, I, I do have something I really want us to talk about within the next week or so. 
Um, and it was it based off of a tweet from uh, Sku's Recent Eats, uh, SKU's Recent Eats on, on Twitter. Um, we'll, we'll talk about it soon. It, he, he posted it, and it just kind of made my head swim a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that I want to talk about kind of in the broader spectrum of the bourbon community or even the whiskey community uh, and the industry uh, in general. So we'll, we'll get into that here here very soon. My tips and bits, I have to ask you first, Swan. Do you know who Charles Cornell is? No, I don't. So a while back, you recommended the show Good Mythical Morning. Yeah. From Rhett and Link. I, and just this week, Charles Cornell, who is an incredible... Uh, piano player I uh, featured on it where he played over top of some of their uh, more famous or, or ridiculous moments on Good Mythical Morning. And is basically because he looks like Rhett? N- I mean, he does kind of, but the, the point behind... So he got famous over the past couple of years because he basically transcribed music over a Cardi B video. Um, oh, gotcha. which she then retweeted, and it's hilarious. I mean, I I think he is so talented and so funny and just is very much in tune with what he does. He's got a great YouTube channel, um, especially for musicians uh, who are kind of looking at some, some more in-depth conversations as... Uh, to what's going on in the music industry now with folks who, you know, have a little bit of background in music theory, but it, it's it's a whole thing. But anyway, so he gets famous because he he plays these arrangements over top of uh, famous videos, uh, or, or, or viral videos. Like he has one for "I can't believe you've done this." Um, <laughs> it, like great. there's there's a few of those like that, and he's just. He's so good at, at just writing these basically nonsense arrangements that he's like, I don't even, I haven't even transcribed this. I haven't even written this music down. I just play it. And so the folks at uh, Good Mythical Morning reached out to him to do the same thing with some of those clips from Good Mythical Morning. Mm-hmm. And it turned out spectacular. Uh, Rhett and Link, who are some of my favorite YouTubers from way way back in the day the first video i ever watched of theirs was the uh um the the taxidermy commercial yes. um <laughs> chuck testa <laughs> their commercials are phenomenal they are unbelievably they're funny they're so good man. Yeah. anyway um guys go check out charles cornell i he i don't think i could be wrong i don't think he lives too terribly far from here Let's get him on the show, man. Let's get him on the show. Get him get him drinking some bourbon and playing piano. <laughs> Be down. Well, Swan, I think that does it for this week. It's a bit of a shorter episode, but I uh, I think we we had some uh, we had some good things going on there. Yeah. What absolutely. a great way to promote our, What a great way to promote the show. We did good things this week. <laughs> this week we did all right. <laughs> On the bar of okay to passable, we were somewhere in the middle. No, it was still it was still bar. Yeah, no, just by bar pass. A pass for a few people, but it's fine. Yeah, we had a good well, time. As long as they don't leave a, a nasty review uh, on iTunes, which we'll we'll talk about here in a second. Thank you all so yeah. much for listening, as you always do every single week. We really do appreciate you guys. You're the best. Where can Swan no? Where can Swan find people on social media? <laughs> Usually in ponds, but oh, I mean geez. also on Facebook and Instagram <sighs> at my bourbon finder. Words is hard, apparently. Um <laughs> uh, you can follow me personally at P 1492 uh on all social media channels. I am also at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can leave us a five star rating and review on the iTunes podcast app, and we will actually read out uh, those reviews on the show. Who who wouldn't love that? That'd be pretty great, right? 
Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you can also leave us a voicemail for our barrel ring segment at 859-428-8253. And uh, we'll actually throw out a question for the uh, the barrel rings this week. What's been uh, the, the one product that lost its age statement that you wish would come back? And why? I got a good one for that. Yeah? I'll save it for next episode. Okay. Cool. So once again, that's 859-428-8253 for the Barrel Ring segment. You can find all of our apparel and merchandise at bourbonshop.threadless.com. Uh, once we hit the, the month of August, by the way, I'll do a little uh, little birthday sale on the on the page. Maybe like a 27% off. I don't know. Something like that. Something special. Um, once I get up to, like if we still have this going once I'm 50... Um, that'd be real, real profitable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can send us uh, all the questions that you have to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com and uh, we'll respond to some of those here on the air. I am just now realizing too that a couple weeks ago we had a question sent in on the email and we did not actually respond to it. Let's do it. You want to? Yeah, we got time, man. We did a short All episode. Right, yeah, Tack we, may as, on. we may as well. So we're gonna take a little, uh, take a little detour here. Um, now that uh, now that I'm looking at it, we might actually have a, we might actually have a couple. Crap, this is good. I am really good about uh, doing this. Uh, thank you all so much, though, for sending in. Calling me Ron Swanson. You can't even check your email. Oh my goodness gracious. I can't say anything. Somebody emailed me from my Instagram uh, account probably like five months ago and I just saw it uh, going through <laughs> going through my Gmail here a few, little while ago. So uh, the first email that we need to get caught up on, which I apologize that I have not gotten to it before now, comes from Matthew Welge. Uh, and this is in regards to episode 131. He said, hey guys, love your podcast. Thank you, Matthew. Keep up the great work. I'm a huge fan of Rye, so this episode was great for me. Swan, at around, so this is for you, Swan, uh, at around 36 minutes, you were trying to find the word for distilleries that search for local grains. I think it's terroir, T-E-R-R-O-I-R, uh, that you were trying to say. I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference. In my opinion, uh, quality is quality. And uh, half-ass is half-ass, uh, no matter how you acquire your grains or make your products. Uh, that said, I would like to get a shout-out to something local to me, so we got to do a shout-out here, too. Absolutely. Uh, Whiskey Acres in DeKalb, Illinois, is not only sourcing local grains, but are family farmers. They grow some grains themselves, going all in on the concept of terroir. They are coming out with a brand new bottled and bond bourbon, and I personally can't wait to try it. It's been ready, but the release is delayed uh, because of COVID. I've had their single barrel cast strength rye, and I really enjoyed it. It had a strong baked rye bread nose and a long spicy flavor and finish uh, that went down really nice and neat uh, in, in my cocktails. Stay safe and keep tasting. Thank you, Matt. That's it. That's great. Pretty That's email. a tidbit I had no idea about. I would love to see if we could get a few of those to do kind of a lineup like we did today. Absolutely. Even. Because the only one I know of is uh, Jeff the Creed that's doing that. So that we've got another one there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I was wrong. That's the only email that we had to respond to on air. Woo, this is going great. <laughs> Killing it today, man. Yeah, no kidding. Regardless, mm. uh, if uh, if you guys have anything that you want to send in, uh, kind of in a long-form question, uh, feel free to send it again to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com, and we will respond to it here on air. And then last but not least, you become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash podcast, where you can get things like the live stream of us recording these episodes, uh, uncut and unfiltered, as we said uh, forever ago, as was supposed to be the tagline for the show, but here we are. Um, Swan's not happy with the, uh, the Knob Creek blend that he's got going on. He made a really horrible face. <laughs> yeah, see, this is the benefit of getting the Patreon service because you get to watch me not realize I just swallowed small little cork chunks from my <laughs> uh, broken cork. So... It's worth it, Let I guess. Let me tell you, it was worth it. You also get the pregame chats 
at the five dollar tier as well as the bonus episodes uh you get some live streams you get some hangouts you get all sorts of good stuff um i'm also i uh, looking into because it was just brought to my attention that we can do merch through patreon now so oh, nice. we might start to putting up some exclusive patreon shirts and and whatnot I over there. So once again, that's patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month. Of course, there is no pressure, but we do appreciate everybody uh, over there who supports us at Patreon. Should we give a shout out to one of our patrons? We've never done this before. I feel like we need to start doing this a little bit because we've got quite a few at this point. Can I can I start with one? Yeah, for sure. Todd Cooper, man. Todd freaking Cooper. Todd freaking Cooper, man. He, what a great guy. He handed me a whole bottle one time and just said, hey, just enjoy it. This is my daily drinker. And I was like, there's no way this is your daily drinker. And I, we got to drink it with a master distiller when we were at Bourbon on the Banks. Oh, along that's with the right. Yeah. I mean, I was just an incredible experience to drink it with him and then turn around and like months later be like, oh, well, I really need to get a bottle of old Pogue. I just haven't seen it in a while. And he just hands me one out of the trunk of his he car. He gives it to us. And yeah. He's, yeah. And he's like, this is my daily drinker. I'm not a rep from the distillery or anything. I just want you to take it and try it and kind of just, if you could spread yep. the word. And I was like, great. We need to get that back on the show. Man. Yes. Honestly, I would love, 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 love to have a good pour of that. Oh. Because he's just so generous. So that, that bottle that uh, he gave us is still unopened. I haven't, I haven't touched <gasps> it. So I, and and right. I told him, too, that I was holding on to it until we were able to hang out again or, or do something. And because of coronavirus, we haven't been able to do that. You know, we had plans for people to come down. We had the live show that we were going to do as well. Uh, and everything kind of fell through. But... It's there. I saw it the other day. I looked right at it. It looked back at me. We had a moment. Oh, wow. We had a moment. Had a yeah. Moment. Yeah. So thank you, Todd Cooper, for being uh, one of our patrons. We appreciate everybody who is a patron of the show over at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. That does it for this week. Swan, as I kind of alluded to, I've got a conversation topic for us to get into next week. Um, it involves the shifting of one distillery being the main sourcing for brands to another. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm so interested. I'm looking forward to having that conversation. Thank you all so much, as always, for tuning into the show. Tell your friends if you've not done so already. I, and I keep on listening, I guess. That's, that's our new, new sign-off. Keep on listening, I guess. <laughs> It's been uh, a lax episode, man. It has, and I'm I am very much not on top of my game. Go back to another episode if you really want to know what it's like to listen to this in my bourbon podcast. Uh, or you can listen to next week's episode. But until then, I'm Perry. And I'm Swan. And this is my bourbon podcast. <laughs>